Hi everyone, welcome to Access Prescriptor. In this video, we are going to discuss about the ACL Surgical Non Surgical Decision Making Framework. Uh, this was uh, developed by uh, ourselves, which is used to take a decision making on the person if come and meet you, person necessary to go for surgery or not. Uh, there is no research evidence behind this, but we are working to develop the researches as in our clinical practice of past three years. A lot of patients we have seen, we try to implement slowly, progressively improve the scale. You can also practice in your clinical practice if it makes sense to you. In this video, just to explain you and make you aware of and give you a knowledge about the decision making framework. So this framework have a 12 point scale system. Each aspect we have to score 0, 1, 2. So maximum score. 24 minimum score is 0. Finally, the person achieving maximum number of score, there's a chance of getting surgery is higher. Minimum number of score, the chance of getting surgery is lower. Come on, let's get dive into the video. Consider he is our model, left leg is affected, right leg is not affected, this leg is injured, we are going to apply this 12 point scale on him. First and second point of the scale is pain and swelling. So if the person have a pain and swelling when he load maximum during the sports related activity only then we can score zero less score if the person having functional activity like walking stair climbing and daily life activity like sit to stand and everything has pain itself we can score one if the person rest itself have a pain and swelling we can score two from here we are going to move on range of motion checking the third point of the scale is knee flexion range of motion check so knee flexion we are going to check we have to check both knee flexion knee extension which is coming next both we have to check in both active and passive range so the person is in a prone position left leg is injured right leg is non-injured ask the person to always check in an unaffected state first i'm keeping my hand ask the person to bend the right right knee maximum maximum so you can measure the distance maximum distance and relax Okay, and actively checking the this other side, active flexion, maximum, 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 this much. Okay, so if there is a difference, your difference, if you are feeling a little higher differences, you can score for that. And again, I have to check passively and also you have to ask patient when you flex, do you have pain or not? There is a pain, there is a restriction in the knee flexion range of motion, you have to consider that in your mind. And then immediately I am going to check in a passive manner. Ask the person to bend the leg, after end range, just press, you have pain, you can ask. Okay and ask the person to bend this leg maximum after bending you can ask them to bend do you have pain you can ask if there is a pain on both active and passive range of motion testing you can score two higher the score we're going to higher the score both has pain there's high chance of acl ligament in involvement and other ligament involvement too any one of the tests has pain you can score one both tests doesn't have a positive results then there is a less chance of having ligament injury so we can score zero next we are coming to knee extension range of motion check Knee extension also we have to check both actively and passively. So this is affected side, this is unaffected side. Considering that unaffected side, I'm pressing my hand. Just grab the great toe, grab the great toe and pull it upward. Pull it upward. This is a passive terminal extension of the knee test. Again, you can compare with the other side. And you can ask the patient, do you have pain or not? They will respond. If there is a pain, consider that. And now we have to check actively. Ask the person to stand. Once the person stands in a side view position, in a proper side angle position, you have to look at the person to completely lock the knee. Completely lock the knee and check the difference if this affected side is not going back more actively compared to unaffected side. And if affected side person try to push back if complains of pain. Okay, consider that. Both active passive, as I said before, both passive and active has a pain or restricted range of motion, you can score two. Any one is affected, you can score one. Both is normal, you can score zero. So we're moving into next category of scale is fifth one is muscle mass. You can ask the person to lift it up and tighten the muscle and check the muscle mass. You can also use the inch tape. If you, while visual observation, if you're feeling severe uh, muscle mass restriction, you can score two. If you're feeling only moderate muscle mass restriction, you can score uh, one. If there is no muscle mass restriction, you can score zero. One factor comes into play, if the person has swelling, it also uh, affects the visual appearance of the muscle mass. That time you have to fluid, you have to collect and come and visual observation, therapist clinical experience comes into play. Highly subjective in nature, you have to measure or uh, you have to observe accordingly. Either for example, calf, hamstring or waist, that waist is severe, this kind of situation you can score two. 
okay just keep that in mind if there is less amount of ways you can score one followed by sixth one is single leg squat test in this test we are going to test the muscle strength ask the person to sit cross your hand on the body just consider left side is affected take your left leg off from the floor without touching the left leg on the floor with only help of right leg stand and sit one time sit well while doing that you have to check the control and everything he was did very well on the right side i'm asking you to perform on the now same thing you have to perform on the affected side sit controllably the person can able to perform both their leg normally there is a less chance of acl injury so we can score zero the person trying they have a good confidence person is trying but couldn't able to complete in a sense we can score one the person not even able to get up not even able to try we can score two so if the person can't able to perform in a sense like this okay ask them to take out the hand and perform okay if the person can't perform like this let increase the height and make the person to perform first of all you have to make them perform in a unaffected state first and then move to affected state seventh one is stability and balance for this you can ask the person to stand on the first unaffected state affected state lift up okay hands on the hip hands on the hip head rotate your head right and left minimum for 10 seconds or 5 times you can check the how many times off balances are happening okay how you can ask the person to also perform the other side it's affected side again you can say how many times off balances are happening if you feel both side leg is equal equally performed well then you can put a score of 0 if you feel less than 50% only there is a imbalance you can uh, put a score of 1 if you feel more than 50% stability issue balance issue was there you can put a score of 2 so considerably this test sit to stand test knee flexion test and extension test all the other tests are highly modifiable or influenced by the person previous physical activity for example left side is get affected already right side doesn't have good amount of strength to compare right side knee flexion is less to compare right side stability less to compare means we will face an issue accordingly we have to modify it and do a test on the person this kind of problem usually face the sedentary population who got injured by road traffic accident or any other bike injuries or any other impact related injuries mostly acl injury are uh, happen in a sport specific population in this sports population you will not face this kind of uh, to modify the test and perform the standard test itself helps you and then you have to ask the patient how many times the instability episode happened how many time you felt your leg is injured again like translated again locked again pop sound come again you felt a similar amount of pain unable to extend the leg this kind of situation happened if there is one or more times instability happened to the person you can score 2 there is no instability you can score 0 only one instability happened you can score 1 because the recurrent injury giving away episode the instability can cause more severe problems also if the person have a higher the grade of injury only the person have a higher amount of instability ninth one we have to ask the person about the return to sports do you want to play return to sports back again or not the person want to go back and perform elite level performance or something you have to put a score of 2 because as the elite level performance increases the higher the chance of recurrent injury or non surgical treatment doesn't help that much at the time So if the person want to play recreationally weekend off matches with friends and all that's why his absolute goal then you can put score one the person functional activity can able to walk uh, i'm normal functional activity i'm sedentary individual just i want to do strength training is this enough means you can put a score of 0 10th point we are going to ask the person opinion about the surgery what do you think what is your opinion about surgery and uh, what do you feel you want to do surgery or not Sorry, sorry, we're we're losing him. I've got to get in there now. <laughs> These factor highly influence the person's financial status, doctor's opinion. This many things will confuse the patient. If the person have a confused mindset, we can put a score of one. The person is very sure I'm not going to go for surgery. I was confident enough to do rehabilitation because I'm not feeling that much problem on my knee. Then you can put a score of zero. If the person is feeling that I want to do surgery, then you can put a score of two. And last two things are very very important. 11th one is mri how many times person take mri also plays crucial role here they have the person who take mri multiple times the person have a highly confused mindset also they don't have trust on their doctor they don't have trust on the therapy these are all the things running inside the patient mind the patient might have high amount of fear and everything and also what mri says there is a lot of research evidence that says that 
uninjured leg also if you take an MRI there is a high chance of showing some ligament injury so the situation which is taken by MRI everything has to considerably keep in your mind if MRI says complete tear of FC along with other ligament injury then put a score of 2 and if MRI says only grade 2 tear put a score of 1 if MRI says grade 1 injury or uh, everything is normal like kind of then put a score of zero then finally we are going to perform special test to confirm the injury i personally ask you to do not do the special test because you are going to harm the ligament again so be careful when you perform special tests latchman tests have a higher validity reliability compared to anterior test and uh, liver sign so better to go with only latchman test still you couldn't able to come to a conclusion next you can go for the liver sign so after performing the Lashman test, according to the therapist, clinical experience also plays a major role. How well trained you are to do the test also plays a major role. While testing, you are feeling a lot of instability, put a score of 2. You are feeling no instability, put a score of 0. Mild instability you are feeling, put a score of 1. So after putting all the score, so total number of score divided by total possible score 24 into 100. If you put this, you will get a value. Consider this person have a score of 12. Divided by 24 into 100, you got 50%. There is a chance 50% the person may need surgery. Higher the percentage, higher the chance of surgery. Lower the percentage, lower the chance of surgery. This purely based on exercise prescriptor. We are practicing past three years in our clinical practice. We developed, we come to this much. Maybe if someone watching this video in any college professors or staffs, please feel free to contact us and get some information. Start do research on it. It will be more useful to build a uh, strong community. We are also looking for the researchers who can help us to develop this and publish uh, to the journals. We have 30, 34 participants data with us. Finally, when it comes to scoring, if the person have more than 70, 75 percentage score out of 24, just refer them for surgery. Less than 60 to 70 percent, don't refer them surgery. The person who take a score of less than 30, definitely they will improve without surgery. In between the 30 to 70 percent of the population, start with rehabilitation first. If the person shows good improvement, third month you will do the Copers classification testing. During that period, if the person passes the test, just go with non-surgical rehabilitation. If the person file the test, refer them to surgery. Hope this video was useful. If you are a researcher or watching this video, if you are a student or watching this video, you can also share with your college staffs. If you are anyone ready to help us to develop this model in a normal population, just uh, feel free to contact us. We give a contact number on the comment section and we'll pin, we'll pin the comment also. And also you can ask your doubts in the comment section and other other things like Copas classification, return to running, return to sports criteria, classification, everything. In further videos, we'll upload. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to share. Happy learning.